welcome, welcome, welcome to Time in the Word Bible Study. I'm Bishop Roney, and I'm glad you have tuned in tonight to listen to this word from the Lord. I'm continuing along the lines of being led by the Spirit of God. I've been ministering on this over the last few weeks, and, 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 and God has me here, so I'm just going to stay here until he releases me from here. It's time for us as the body of Christ to mature in the Lord, to grow in the Lord. God wants his people to grow up. He wants us to be able to hear a word from him. It's not about going to someone to hear what they say God is telling you to do. You should know what God is saying. He's The Holy Spirit is on the inside of us, and he has come to lead and guide and direct us. And that's what God wants to do. The Lord wants us to mature. Uh, over in Ephesians 4.14, 4, before I get started, and I'm going to read the NIV version, it says, Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning craftiness of people in their deceitful schemes. In other words, God doesn't want us to be tossed to and fro. He wants us to hear what he's saying, follow him. The Bible said when we receive that word with meekness, it grows us up. What did it say? It says, receive with meekness the engrafted word where it's able to save your soul. It, when your soul gets saved, it, it helps you to grow and mature in the Lord. As I'm ministering to you tonight, it's going to cause maturity as you take that word, receive that word, walk in that word, and depend upon the Lord. Over in Proverbs, it said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And so you trust him, trust him for your guidance, for your life, for your individual life. You need no man tell you how to, how to walk with God. God, the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you to teach you all things. Let me read another translation. It says, uh, the King James says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sledge of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive you. The enemy is lying there just to deceive you, to get you off track. Have you gone too far to the left? God wants you to stay on the straight, narrow path. The ESV version said, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. No, God doesn't want his people tossed to and fro. He wants us to grow up in him. He wants us to be like him. If we're moving to and fro, you're moving repeatedly. You're moving from the Lord instead of moving to the Lord. You're going back again, sideways. You're just marking time. God wants his people to grow, and he wants us to grow, go from glory to glory. And uh, the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 3.18, let's see if I have the King James here. No, I don't have the King James, but let me read the NIV version. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory or being transformed into his image in every increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is his spirit. The NLT version says, so all of us who have had that veil removed, and you have had the veil removed, can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord who is the spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. Now, the only way we can become more and more like the Lord is following, being led by the Spirit of God. And when we're led by the Spirit of God, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, the Bible said they're sons of God. He can lead sons. Are you a son today? You're a son today. Open yourself and receive what the Lord is saying and follow the Holy Spirit for your life for how he leads you, how he guides you. And he's only going to guide you through the word. Paul said, when the veil is removed, there is spiritual revelation, which is followed by spiritual transformation. I'm going to say that again. What Paul is saying is when the veil is removed, there is spiritual revelation, 
which is followed by spiritual transformation. With the veil gone, all those in Christ have unveiled faces and they can boldly look at Christ, who is the glory of God. We can now see him for who and what he is. It's an act of seeing and understanding the nature of Christ, which begins the process in which God transformed his children into the image of Christ. Not only are those in Christ finally free to see God's glory, but they can begin to become God's glory. And, and that's, they're beginning to become more like Christ. I'm going to say that again. Not only are those in Christ finally free, have been free to see God's glory, but they can begin to become God's glory as they begin to become like Christ. The more we become like Christ, the more the glory of God will be upon us. This is what these lessons are all about. Looking like Christ in the earth. So stay tuned because there is more to come. We want to be more like Christ. We, in order to be more like Christ, we must be more God inside minded. Therefore, get your paper and pen and be ready when I get started. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to give you glory today. We're just so excited because you are the Lord, our righteousness. You are the Lord, our sanctifier. You are the Lord, our helper. You are the Lord, our keeper. And you are the Lord that transforms us right into your image and likeness. And this is our desire. You're coming back for a glorious church. So we pray that the eyes of our understanding, our eyes of our hearts be enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of your calling and what the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints as we open ourselves going from glory to glory, being transformed into the same image of Christ. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. Our prayer lines are open. Dial 302-803-9093. There's someone there waiting to pray with you. Prayer is always happening at the Church of Deliverance. Monday through Friday with the prayer warriors at 6 a.m. With Pastor McGuire on Tuesday and Thursday night at 6.30 p.m. Saturday morning at 8 a.m. And Sunday morning, we have it at our church. And Downing Towns is at 8 o'clock. And in uh, Vineland, New Jersey, it's at 1015. You can always meet us on the prayer line Monday through Friday and also Saturday morning by dialing 302-202-1106 and enter the code 883-862 and you will be connected. As I said, our doors are open, so you can worship with us anytime. On Sunday mornings, you can worship with us in Vineland, New Jersey. We are worshiping at the Wingate Hotel in Vineland, New Jersey. The address is 2196 West Landis Avenue in Vineland, New Jersey. Or you can worship up with us in Downingtown, Pennsylvania at 9 o'clock at 199 Bradford Avenue in the city of Downingtown, Pennsylvania. We're looking forward to seeing you. Or you can visit with us online. Our online services are every Sunday morning and our online services are every Wednesday night. Sunday morning, our online service starts at 920. On Wednesday night, it starts at 630. You can go to codword.org under Deliverance TV. You can go to on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Roku. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, it's offering time. Uh, it's a time to be excited. The word should excite us. A time of receiving. Offering is a time of receiving. Receiving from God. Although we're giving because he said give and it shall be given unto you a good measure. It's a time for you to receive as you give. Because you can't beat him giving. Because he's a God that pressed down what you give. He pressed it down and he have it running over. 
And this is and he just want to give to you because that's his goodness. That's his nature. His nature is to give. Our nature should be to give. We should be one with him. And our na we should we have the same nature as God. So we should be wanting to give as well. Deuteronomy 16, 16 and 17 says, Don't come empty handed. Decide uh, be, what amount you want to contribute voluntarily out of what he has blessed you with and bring that as a gift. Now this was under the old covenant and Moses, Moses is reminding the Israelite men of their obligation to go three times a year appearing before the Lord. And this celebration was for everyone, family members, servants, the Levites, the aliens, the fatherless, the widows, to join in this celebration. Each man was to bring a gift to this festival. For it was a joyful expression of thanks to God for his rich spiritual and material blessings they experienced in the past and the present. So our giving is an offering of thanks to God. Thanking him for how he has blessed us. Thank, being thankful how he has blessed us in the past, the present, and how he's going to bless us in the future. The gifts they were to bring were to be to the Lord and it was to be equal to the people's blessings. See, God wants to increase you. Our theme for 2021 is increasing, increasing. And we ex we're expecting a supernatural manifestation because last year our uh, theme was expecting the glory. So the glory is going to be working for us in 2021 with increase, praise God. Deuteronomy 15, 14. Thou shalt furnish him liberally out of the fl thy flock and out of the floor and out of thy wine presses of that wherewith the Lord thy God has blessed thee, thou shalt give unto him. You give to God. He was telling them, whatever you have, you give out of that. They had flocks, they would give out of that. Out of thy floor, whatever they had, they gave out of that. Whatever you got, you give out of that. We should give. Every time an offering roll of it, we train ourselves to submit in love to the Father and give out of our hearts. They were to give out of what the Lord God had blessed them with. They were to celebrate the Lord blessing them with a large, generous amount of their goods. The old covenant was out of their flocks. And what they had harvested, they offered to God. Today, it is out of our hearts and our finances. We offer to God what the Lord has blessed us to earn. We give out of our hearts. We give out of hearts of love and not out of hearts of obligation. I'm going to say that again. We give out of hearts of love and not out of hearts of ob obligation. In the Old Testament, Old Covenant, it was out of duty. In the New Testament, it's out of love. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And this commandment, it says give. That's a commandment, give and it shall be given. We're commanded to give. It's a time of celebrating. Celebrating the, what, the goodness of God. Celebrating the love of God. We should never come and not give something in an offering. We should always give because he said give. This, this time has been set aside for giving. And so we should always give. So give. These are the ways you can give. You can give by texting CODMJ to the members. Text CODMJ to those that would like to be partners with us and like to join in on this giving process. I'm going to tell you, this is a blessed church. If you, uh, uh, and this is good ground. It's good ground for harvesting. If you just uh, give. You can give by texting CODMJ to 54244. I'll say that again. Texting CODMJ 54244. I'm pretty sure it's on the screen. But also, you can uh, go to CODWord.org under online giving and give. Or you can text, you can go to paypal.me slash Church of Deliverance and give. Bible said give. 
you should be given. Don't say, I don't have enough. You'll never have enough. You should got to put some seed in the ground. You put some seed in the ground, you'll be able to reap a harvest. If you don't give anything, you won't be able to receive anything. When Jesus, when God gave his son, his son gave his life, and look at all the harvest that the son has received just by giving. Father, we bring, we bring our love offerings, the offerings of love, and we celebrate life, the life that you gave us. We're thankful how you have blessed us, and we offer thanksgiving to you as we worship you in our giving tonight because you are the God that is more than enough. You're the God that supplieth all our needs. So we plant these seeds into the kingdom of God to build a treasury into heaven so that we can receive in this earth hundredfold blessings in Jesus' name. Praise God. They used to sing a song, give, give, give. Give it in Jesus' name. So we're going to give it. Just give it. Praise God. Rejoice as you give it. What are you, you're celebrating, celebrating the life that Christ has given to you. Oh, let's do the offering blessing. I am redeemed. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Poverty, he has given me wealth. For sickness, he has given me health. And for death, he has given me eternal life. I am blessed. I want you to say it again. If you... We're blessed, and we, we give out of blessings, out of the blessings we have, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I am blessed, for I have been appointed and empowered to be blessed. I am blessed. The Lord is my shepherd. He feeds me, he guides me, and he shields me. Therefore, I do not lack and I do not want for anything. For this is my year of manifestation. I live by faith. I do not fear. I walk in love. I give in love too. And God provides all my needs. I am blessed. Praise God. Say it again. Say it again. Abraham, Bible said Abraham blessings are yours. Yes, they are. Hallelujah. Well, let's get into our study, being led by the Spirit of God. He's going to lead us in truth and help us to grow up and experience the fullness of what God designed us to walk in. The Bible says over in Ephesians 1, I believe it's Ephesians 1, 23, we are the fullness of him bodily. So if I'm the fullness of him, I must walk in it. And he's going to, the Holy Spirit is going to show me how to walk out that fullness in, in a physical world. He's going to show us how to walk it out in the physical world. Go with me to 1 Thessalonians 5.21. And I'm going to read the Amplified Bible. It says, but test and prove all things until you can recognize what is good to that whole fast. Anything the Spirit of God speaks to us about will always be in line with His Word. I'm going to say it again. Whatever the Spirit of God speaks to us, it will always be in line in His Word. He speaks truth. He doesn't speak error. He speaks truth. A lot of people have heard voices and got off track. My father always said, you got to be careful saying God told you to say something. And, and you thinking God's telling you to say something and God is not telling you to say that. You want to be sure that God is speaking to you and it's not you. It's your desire. Got to make sure it's not the desire of your heart for this to happen. And the body of Christ it getting caught up, it's their desires. But we want the Lord's desire. We must judge the things we hear to see if it is right or wrong, judging things by the word of God because the spirit 
of God and the word of God will agree. We should not seek a voice or follow voices. We shouldn't seek to hear a voice or seek to follow voices. We should follow the word of God only. God's word is true and we should follow the word of God. That's where the life lies in the word. 1 Corinthians 14.10 There are, I suppose, all these many to us unknown tongues of this world voices somewhere, and none is destitute of its own power of expression and meaning. The Passion says, I suppose that the word, the world, has all sort of languages, and each conveying meanings to ones who speak it. It's conveying a meaning to the person is speaking to. You should not seek after a voice. But there are many voices in this world and their messages and the message isn't lining up with God's word. What we hear should always agree with the word. You must remember that it should always agree with the word. You must read the Bible for yourself. Be discerning when you hear something that doesn't sit well in your spirit. When someone says it and it's not God's will for you to prosper in every area of your life, ask yourself if it is in line with the new covenant of God. That's just one example. Because God's desire for you to prosper. When you hear a voice and it tells you it's not God's will for you to be healed, see what the word says in the new covenant. Healing is the children's bread. God designed for us to prosper and, and his will is for us to be in health. Over in 3 John, the second chapter, 3 John 2, the second verse, the Amplified says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. This is God. God wants you to prosper. So you got to know prosperity belongs to you. Just like you got to know health belongs to you. Bible said he was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon him. And with his stripes, you are healed. You have been made whole. You have been healed to walk out in the fullness of what God designed. I'm going to read 3 John 2 again. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way that your body may be kept well, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. That's prosperity in every area of your life. Therefore, prove it to see whether or not it is from the word of God when someone says something to you. The word is good and the word is right and it's right for you. You can base it on whether or not you like what you hear can't base the word on whether you like it. Oh, I like this part of it, but I don't like this part. No. You must base it on God, on what God is saying, and not on what the way you feel, the way you think, the way you believe. It's about what God says. Allow the Spirit of God to direct you. Allow Him to search your heart. Let's look at Proverbs 20, 27. The King James. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly, making sure everything's right in there, searching it. So when it when we open our mouths, the right thing comes out. Uh, the Amplified says the spirit of man, that factor in human personality, which proceeds immediately from God, is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the, his inward parts. Proverbs 20, 27, the Passion Translation, the Spirit of God breathed into man, or the breath of life was breathed into you. And it's like a living lamp, a shining lamp, searching into the innermost chambers of our being. If it's searching the innermost cha chambers of our being, being, you can trust the Spirit of God's guidance. He's going to lead you into truth. It's not going to lead you into error. 
the spirit of man, your inward man, the real you, is a new creature in Christ Jesus. And the spirit of God, that lamp of God, is searching all the inward parts of you. And old things have passed away and all things have become new. Your spirit has the life and nature of God in it. The Holy Spirit is in your spirit and your spirit is in fellowship with God. You're in union with God. You're, you're one with God. Spirit of God is not going to lead you wrong or tell you something wrong. The Holy Spirit is at home in you. And the inward man, which is the Spirit of God, is in you. He'll never lead you wrong. He's going to guide you into truth. You should be able to tell, you should be able to be able to tell your flesh from your spirit. Whether it is the flesh wanting you to do something. Or your spirit leading you. You should be able to tell your flesh from your spirit. In 1 John 3 and 9, the King James, it says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. You just can't, you can't commit sin. Why can't you? You say, why can't I commit sin? You can't commit sin because you're born of God. You're born again. God's seed is in you and will remain in you. So you can't, you cannot sin. Hallelujah. You're born again. Your inward man cannot sin and will not sin because you're born of God. And that's the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. The Spirit of God in you will not sin. You're born again. Spirit cannot sin, will never sin, because you're born of God. Now, I'm not saying you're, you won't miss it, your flesh, but your spirit. We're dealing with the spirit now. Your spirit can't sin, and your spirit will never sin, does not commit sin. Go with me to 1 John 3, 9. The New English translation reads, everyone who has been fathered by God does not practice sin because God's seed resides in him and thus he is not able to sin because he has been fathered by God. See? I'm going to read that again. Everyone who has been fathered by God does not practice. You're not a practitioner of sin. Because God's seed resides in you. And thus he is not able to sin because he has been fathered by, the, by God. See, you, you, you're not going to practice sin. The Holy Spirit is not going to teach you to practice sin. You have been fathered by God. He's going to lead you. Now, your outward man, the flesh, the physical part of you, will miss it. But your inward man will never miss it. For the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, and it searches all the inward parts of the belly. Your spirit has God's nature and cannot sin or do wrong. We have the spirit of God in us, which is the seed of God that cannot sin. Your flesh will dominate you and cause you to miss the mark. Yes, even being born again. But your body has not been presented to the Lord. And the mind, has, if the mind, body has not been presented and the mind has not been renewed with the word of God, it's going to miss it. You're going to miss the mark. Romans 12, 1 said, I beseech you therefore, King James, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And be not conformed. You won't be conformed to this world if you have received that word. That word transforms you so the Holy Ghost can lead you 
so you would never miss it. First, you must present your body to the Lord so your mind can be renewed. If you don't present your body, your mind will never be renewed because you'll not, you won't position yourself to receive the word. You won't position yourself to hear the word. You won't position yourself to read the word. You won't position yourself to submit to the word. You must present your body to the Lord so your mind can be renewed. For if you don't present your body to the Lord, your mind will never be renewed and you'll miss it. If your mind is not renewed with God's word, your flesh and unrenewed mind will dominate your spirit. That's why there are so many baby and carnal Christians. They have unrenewed minds. Go with me to 1 Corinthians 3.1. King James, My brethren could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. The Bible said over in Romans, to be, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. See, what is he saying? When we're carnal minded, we can't walk in the things that God designed us to walk in because we're carnal minded. But when we're spiritual minded, we can walk in these things and because we're, we're able to listen and obey and hear what, how the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding us to walk in those things that God designed for us to walk in it. But the carnal mind, Christian, they can't walk in those things. Uh, the Amplified says, with the same verse, How, However, brethren, I could not talk to you as to spiritual men, but as to non-spiritual men of the flesh, in whom the carnal nature predominates as to mere infants in the new life in Christ, unable to talk yet. Oh, you're not able to say the right things. The New English translation says, so brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but instead as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. Why? Because you wouldn't have understood what he was saying. Paul said, you're not, you're not going to understand what I'm saying because you're not spiritual minded. God wants his body of believers to be spiritual minded. He wants us to grow up. The Voice Bible said, my brothers and sisters, I cannot address you as people who walk by the Spirit. I have to speak to you as people who tend to think in merely human terms, as spiritual infants in the Anointed One. Let me read one more translation. Brothers and sisters, when I was with you, I found it impossible to speak to you as those who are spiritually mature people. So if they're not spiritually mature, they're carnal. For you are still dominated by the mindset of the flesh. We don't want to be dominated by our flesh. We don't want to be ruled by our flesh. And because you are immature infants in Christ. This is what Paul was saying to the Christians, to the Corinthians. Let's look at the third verse. For you are living your lives dominated by the mindset of the flesh. Ask yourself, is there jealousy among you? Do you compare yourself with others? Do you quarrel like children and end up taking sides? If so, this proves that you are living your lives centered on yourselves, dominated by the mindset of the flesh and behaving like unbelievers. This is how you know you are spiritually minded. This is how you know you're not spiritually minded, but carnal minded, having the mindset of the flesh, to being dominated by the flesh, the flesh guiding you, the flesh directing you. Let me read the New England translation. For you are still influenced by the flesh, but since there is still jealousy and dissension among you, are you not influenced by the flesh and behaving like unregenerated people? When the body has been presented to the Lord and the mind renewed with God's word, then your mind will be one with your spirit and dominate your flesh instead of your flesh dominating your spirit. Your inward man, your spirit, through your renewed mind, 
will dominate your flesh, control or take over your body. That inward man, which is your spirit, if your mind is renewed, it will dominate your flesh, control or take over your body. But if it had that inward man hasn't been renewed with the word of God, it cannot dominate the flesh. You're dominated and ruled by your body. Your spirit man will be controlled. God wants the control. He wants to have full control. And he can only have full control when we allow, we allow our spirit man to be, our minds to be renewed. And allow the spirit of God to dominate our flesh and control and take over our body. Go with me to Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's how you walk in the spirit. You walk in the spirit. If you walk in the spirit, it will not have you fulfilling the flesh, fleshly desires and doing things wrong. That's how you walk in the spirit. By not walking in the flesh. And the desires of the flesh. And doing those things the flesh wants you to do. Your spirit has God's life and God's nature in it. Everything that God is, is in your spirit. For you are born of God. Remember? And you cannot sin. Go with me to 2 Peter 1, 4. Whereby, the King James, are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these we might be partakers, I want you to hear me now, of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We have escaped the corruption that is in the world through our desires. Passion said, as a result of this, he has given you magnificent promises that are beyond all price. So that through the power of these tremendous promises, you can experience partnership with the divine nature by which you have escaped the corrupt desires that are in the world. And this is what God wants. He wants us to escape these things. And the only way we can escape them is as we present our bodies to the Lord and have that mind renewed. And the Holy, then you can be open for the Holy Spirit's guidance. Through God's love, His nature, His life, we can expect. And we can, we can escape the worldly desires of the flesh and walk in the Spirit. Being spiritually minded and not carnal minded. Spiritual minded people feed on the Word of God. They're being partakers of his divine nature. And because of that, their nature cannot sin because they are born of God. We can know what voice is speaking to us because we're spiritual minded. Our bodies have been presented to, the, to God and our minds have been renewed with the word of God. Then and only then will we be able to to know what voice is speaking to us. When we are one with the Spirit of God, we will not miss the leading of the Holy Spirit. Look at, with me at Acts 27 and 9. It says, King James, now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto their sir, I perceive that this voyage will be with her and much dang damage, not only of the lading, lading and ship, but also of our lives. See? He perceived it. How did he perceive it? He perceived it through and by the Holy Spirit. The New English says, since considerable time had passed and the voyage was now dangerous, because the fast was already over, he had already they had presented, he had presented himself in a fast. Paul advised them, men, I can see the voyage is going to end in disaster and great loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. Paul could sense it from within, from his inward witness. He perceived there was danger ahead of them. He didn't perceive it physically. He perceived it 
spiritually. It was, a, it was spiritually discerned. His inward witness. It was his spirit that he had this witness from. We must be spiritual minded in this day to perceive things, to sense some things. It is time for us to perceive and sense what is about to occur so we can avoid dangerous situations in our lives. Now, before this pandemic hit, the Lord let me know that th there was something that was going to hit and it was going to be dangerous and how it was going to affect the whole world. But he also told us that not to get in fear because we were protected. And so I said it to the church. Have we been protected? Yes, we have been protected. God is our protection. We can always trust what God says. As we become more spirit conscious, we will learn and know how to follow the Holy Spirit. The primary way God leads us, I said, is through our inward witness. Therefore, the mind must continually be renewed, being renewed with the word of God, being one with God and his word being spiritual minded. Go with me to Romans 8 and 5. King James says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, and but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, what he's saying, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. They're going to walk in the flesh. That's where their concern is, is the flesh. It's not about spiritual things. There's no word there. When the word is there, it, sets you, it gets you geared for spiritual things. When there's no word, you are, you are fleshly minded. And that's what Paul is saying here. They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If the Apostle Paul had been carnal minded, he would not have perceived the danger ahead of them. He would have never seen it. But because he was spiritually minded, spiritual minded, he could see and perceive the danger. And it was life and peace. He walked in the life and peace. Works the same with, with us. We must perceive the danger ahead so we can avoid deathly situations and walk in life and peace. Being led by the whole inward witness is the number one way in which the Spirit of God leads us. And he's the same in Hebrews 13, 8. And King James has said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He leads the same way. The Lord is still the same. He leads the same way today as he led the early Christians. He leads the same way today as he was leading Paul back then, Apostle Paul. His word is still working. His word is the same. God does not change. He is the same. The Holy Spirit is still guiding the church today as he did in the early church. The Holy Spirit is still guiding and directing us, and he's directing us in truth. Romans 8, 14, King James, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Only sons listen. Only sons follow. If you are willing to be led by the Spirit of God, you are a son of God. For it says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Go with me to Acts 26, 19. I'm only going to read one verse. And it says, King James Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disappointed unto the heavenly vision. Another translation of Passion said, So you see, King Agrippa, I had not been disobedient to what re was revealed to me from heaven. See, he wasn't disobedient to the leadings of the Holy Spirit. He was able to follow the Holy Spirit. Paul said, I, I wasn't disobedient to it. God's Spirit leads sons. That's why the Apostle Paul said he was not disobedient to what was revealed to him from heaven, from the Spirit of God. In the books of Acts, we see that the Acts of the Apostle, the various ways that they received guidance. It was through visions, 
from angels who appeared and told them what to do. But it did not happen every day in their lives. It occurred once or twice in a lifetime for most people. But they are not ordinary ways God leads his people. Most people want to be led spectacularly. And they miss the spirit of God actually leading them because they're looking for it at another direction. The way he leads is by an inward witness. Whatever way God leads, you should follow him and not look for the spectacular way to be led. For as many, remember Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God or the sons of God, sons will listen, sons will obey, sons will follow. Remember the number one way the Holy Spirit leads is through an inward witness. So we should not be looking for angels to lead us. Looking for something to fall from the sky to lead us or even for a vision. We must allow this Holy Spirit to mature us as he will as we follow his leading. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God or the sons of God. If you are allowing the Spirit of God to lead you today, you are a son of God. Go with me to Acts 13 and 1. King James, now there was in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon and was called Niger and Lucia as Cyrene of Manian, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetra and Saul as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, here, the Holy Ghost is speaking. Holy Ghost said, he said this, separate me, Barnabas, and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. Here we see, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, they were just not singing to one another, but what they were doing was to the Lord in the mood of expectancy and openness to the Lord's leading and guidance. There was a need for the gospel to, to be sent to the Gentile worldwide. And as they fasted and prayed, they were in, ex, in, in expectancy mood, mode. See, we get in an expectancy mode when we start fasting and praying. And when we come together in our service, we should come with a spirit of expectancy. Expecting the Holy Spirit to show up. Expecting the Holy Spirit to do what he desires to do. To do what the Father wants done in that service. We should come together with, in, a, in, a, in a mode of expectancy. Especially for our individual lives and especially for us corporately. We should come in expectation as we minister to the Lord. Singing to him. Waiting in his presence creating an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to speak to us. It says, the Holy Ghost said, we don't know how he said it, but those five ministers present heard the Holy Ghost speak. We don't know whether they got it inside or how it happened, but we know the Holy Ghost said. The Holy Ghost could not have spoke it out through one of them. I could have spoke it out through one of them. I don't know. It doesn't say. We don't know. But we do know the Holy Ghost said. We know the Holy Ghost spoke. The Holy Ghost said, separate me, Bartimaeus and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Go to John 16, 13. King James, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of me, and shall show it unto me. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I say I, that he shall take a mine and show it unto you. Let me read another translation. But when the Spirit... Spirit, truth, giver, giving spirit comes, passion. He will unveil the reality of every truth. So you got the spirit 
truth giving spirit within you to uh, unveil the reality of truth within you. He's not going to speak his own message, but only what he hears the Father, and he will reveal it prophetically to you what is to come. He will glorify me on the earth, for he will receive from me what is mine and reveal it to you. Everything that belongs to the Father belongs to you. That's why I say that. The divine encourager will receive what is mine and reveal it to you. The spirit of truth is going to guide you into all truth, leading you to the truth that is in Christ. The work of the Holy Spirit is never separated from Jesus Christ or the Word of God. If people claim the Spirit of God led them to do things contrary to the example of Christ or the teaching of the Word, they are mistaken. They missed it. They missed the mark because they're not being led by the Spirit of God. It was a wrong voice. The Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit leads us into truth. Jesus is truth. That's what John 14, 6 said. He's truth. And the word is truth, according to John 17, 17. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Where the Holy Spirit is at work, there must be truth. It is the ministry of the Spirit that, is, that will enrich us with the treasures of God's truth. I'm going to say that again. It is the ministry of the Spirit that is going to enrich us. It's going to enrich you with the treasures of God's truth. He's going to enlighten you with God's truth and enrich you with God's treasures. The Word of God is a rich mind of gold, silver and precious jewels, us to live in and live by. We can only live in them and live by them when we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Submitting ourselves therefore unto God and resisting the devil. Resisting the devil's plans, resisting your own plans and submitting to the plans of the, God, of the Lord by presenting your bodies to him and being not conformed to this world but being transformed Allowing the Spirit of God to lead you and guide you into all truth. Father, we thank you for this word tonight. This word that ministers life, to cause us to grow up in you, to cause us to mature in you. Causing us to walk in what you designed us to walk in. The Spirit of life leading us into life and peace. That's what he came for, to guide us into truth. And your word is true. We give you glory because your word is you. You are the Lord, our righteousness. And you are the Lord, our protector. You are the Lord, our guider. You're the Lord, our keeper. And we give you glory today for the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us into everything you are. In Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us tonight for our time in the Word. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like to invite you to the cross. Come to Jesus. He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. He hung on the cross for, you, for your benefit. It wasn't for his. He did it for your benefit. He went to the cross for your benefit. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, that God had raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Just confess him as Lord today. Confess, confess him as your Lord and Savior. Acknowledge that he came for you. Acknowledge that he died for you. Acknowledge that he rose again and went back, and he's seated on the right hand of the Father. He's making intercession for you. Just acknowledge that. And you are a child of the King. And welcome to the family of God. If you made that confession with me today, I want you to write me at Church of Deliverance at codword.org. Drop me a line. 
Church of Deliverance at cldword.org or call 302-803-903. Someone's there to pray for you. If you want someone else to lead you, call that number, 302-803-903, because someone's there to pray and minister to you. Until next week, walk in the supernatural. Have a blessed day, for Jesus is Lord. God bless.